us. It's back. It's, it's us. us back. It's back. It's us. us. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna shut it down and start over again. <laughs> Just uh, let's wrap up that workshop it a bit. Start again. It us. It us back. Yes. Hello, us here. Our brains have melted because of all of the awesome E3 news. There's been so much video game news. Right, my brain isn't there. It liquefied. It came out of my ears. It did. Um, and I'm just trying to, you know, just pick up the pieces of my shattered life. It made a giant mess in uh, the office. We did know. get the wet vac out and have to suck all that brain juice on up. Man, this went a lot um, deeper and darker than I thought it would. You said it leaked out of your ears. I don't know what you want from me. That's I, fair. That's a yes and situation. We improv together. <laughs> so, welcome to Think Geek This Week. This is going to be probably just basically an E3 roundup show, let's be honest. So if you don't like video games, stick around. <laughs> Keep watching anyway. And then you'll learn about You'll learn games. about video games, but also, at the end of the show, we'll be giving away two Harry Potter watches. <laughs> Uh, and they I'll are, tell you what they look like, too. Yeah, they are house-specific watches. I looked behind me because that's where they are. Um, they are house-specific watches. Uh, you know. Everyone knows their house. So, uh, when you follow that bit.ly link that is in the comments or the description of the video, depending on where you're watching, uh, you will just need to specify your house when we email you if you win. And then you have to answer that email and tell me. Mm -hmm. So... Be sure that you enter to win a Harry Potter house watch right here with this link. Uh, for those of you on Facebook mobile, if you're watching our Facebook live stream from your phone, you will have to type that link into your browser. We're sorry. That's just know. the way that Facebook works. We wish that we could make it a hyperlink, but they don't allow it. So Not when you're on the phone. Like uh, we, We're looking at the comments like on our desktop here mm -hmm. and like we can see the link but for some reason on your phone it's like no don't click away exactly they want you to look at our beautiful faces more De -ding. De -ding. uh so <laughs> thank you for joining us let's just jump into e3 because we have so, so much. much news um except before that I know you did a segue before that we just re want to remind everyone we are here with our third co-host Timmy um and today he is dressed as the vault dweller from mm -hmm. I think Vault One Hundred One is that his? Yeah. So this is from Fallout Three. Math. <laughs> Fallout Three. And um, we want to invite you to enter a contest to make Timmy a costume. So we'll mm -hmm. bring that Timmy and all of his winning costumes to San Diego Comic Con in like a month, which yeah. is crazy. Um, and we want to invite you to get in on the contest, help us out, help Timmy out, uh, make a costume for him. And you can find all the information here at thinkgeek.com slash costume core. Yep. Uh, if we love your costume, you could win some money. And obviously, we'll be featuring all of the Timmies we receive on social media. So you'll get the, the accolades and praise from your peers that you deserve. Uh, all right. So thank you for ruining my beautiful Sorry. segue. You just pooped all over it. So now I'm I thought this do was again. important. Now okay. that we've done all of that, let's talk about E3 because there was so, so much, much to talk so about. So much video game news. I'm going to start with my favorite game that was announced, and that's The Last of Us 2. So I loved the original The Last of Us. It was one of my favorite games of the year. I bought a PS3 so I could play it. So like <laughs> I was really invested. And then the sequel looks so good. It does look good. Is and like, I'm thing. not just talking about like the cinematic trailer, which obviously looks amazing. And I well, love that yeah. narrative. But then they showed that really long gameplay trailer and it looked outstanding. It did look like, uh, what's her name? I want to say Elle, but I know it's Ellie. Ellie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ellie, like, she took a lot of punishment in that trailer. <laughs> just, I was like, oh no, I think you got shot like four times, my dude. That trailer was an emotional roller coaster. It started with the cinematic trailer, which was like a high. Everyone's happy. Uh, Ellie and her girlfriend are meeting and there's like a dance going on. It's very cute. I love it. It was so good. I felt very warm in my heart, which I was not expecting to feel because if you're familiar with The Last of Us, it's uh, an RPG game where you're playing as characters who are trying to survive basically like a... I don't want to say zombies, but basically a zombie Plant apocalypse. zombies. <laughs> yeah, they're like infected people who no longer have control over themselves. Um, and you're basically trying to survive in this very grim, dark 
apocalyptic world. And so when the trailer started and they were at like what looked to be like kind of like a hoedown. <laughs> It looks like a hoedown. A line dance of yeah, some sort. Yeah, a line sort. dance of some sort. barn raising. And it's just, like, people having a good time, people dancing together, Ellie and her girlfriend kiss. Like, I was like, is this the same game? Like, is this, like, a <laughs> DLC mod that was just, like, we put you through hell in the first game, so now just just feel good for a bit. I want, that's basically, this is the answer, like, Mass Effect, when they were like, sorry <laughs> about the third one. Here, you can have the Citadel DLC where everyone's friends and they go to a party. <laughs> That's what this felt like entirely. So I was watching that and I was like, this is amazing. This is great. I don't really feel like it's The Last of Us, but I love it all the same. And then it immediately switched over to whatever the opposite of like yeah. happy, loving feelings is, which is like fear and um, revulsion yeah. and like just like <laughs> extreme violence. Um, yeah, it was basically like oh, Ellie, everyone should be afraid of you. And it was like a cute moment. And then it was like, they should be because she's going to murder you. Yeah, she is going to Clearly, Joel, like, trained her very well. Because in the gameplay trailer, which is when things get really dark and scary, um, Ellie just takes out, like, no joke, like, 15 people by herself. With, like, eh, a handgun, a, <laughs> a rock, like, a broken bottle, a bunch of arrows. Like... It was really cool, and it um, definitely feels like the same game. Um, there were really seamless transitions yeah. between, um, you know, scripted scenes and then immediately into gameplay. The stealth elements are still there. That's and... my kind of game. I like to sneak. Exactly. And the thing that I remember very specifically that I loved about The Last of Us was the fact that it really felt like an apocalyptic universe yeah. because you were like, Oh no, I missed one bullet and now I only have two more and there's no more left. <laughs> and like she's like pulling arrows back out of people after yeah. she shoots them because like you need those arrows and yeah. and they kept that going and it seemed and, really cool. And the people she were she was fighting and taking down were actually people, Megan says, not plant people. Yes, that's exactly. right. I mean, they seem to be people intent on causing her harm, so. And that was interesting. Uh, in this long trailer, I don't remember the exact, like, time count of it, but it was, this trailer was really much longer than I anticipated in, like, a press conference. Yeah. Um, but in the trailer, they did not show any infected people, so does that mean that there aren't any anymore? Or maybe that's just not what they were highlighting. We don't know yet. Hopefully we'll find out more. Um, and Ellie and her girlfriend for life, XOXO. XOXO. We loved it. <laughs> we loved it so much. Uh, next, during uh, Sony's conference, they uh, announced a game called... Oh, I did have a picture. Hold on. That's her girlfriend. They're so cute. We kiss. Kiss. I kiss. mean, they did. They okay. did. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Next up, uh, during their press conference, Sony announced the ghost of Tsuhima. Tell me more. <sighs> was that the man with the weird flute? Yes. <laughs> it was, first of all, they announced this by having this man just, like, absolutely shred on this traditional <laughs> Japanese flute. And it was very bizarre because um, they actually switched venues in the middle of the press conference. So, like, you zoom in and everyone's in this, like, barn. And that was when they did The Last of Us. And then they, like, went on a break for ten minutes and they moved everyone in the hall into another room that was just, like, this <laughs> giant wide, like, panel of, Perfect. of TV video screens. And then there was this man who was dressed entirely in like feudal Japanese garments, just shredding it on the flute for no joke, three straight minutes. And everyone was just like, what's happening? And I loved it. I need to hire this flute man to like play me down the aisle at my wedding. It was great. Uh, but the actual game itself is a... Um, it's like a RPG with really strong um, like Japanese themes. It takes place in feudal Japan. Um, I really was getting <sighs> like some Yasuo vibes. I don't. I know that means nothing to you, but uh, for all of you who play League of Legends, one, hey, she me plays too. So much League. Two. <laughs> this just felt like I was in Yasuo's home world, Great. just exploring his life. Awesome. Uh, but we don't know much about the game except we follow this one uh, male samurai as he's basically exploring through feudal Japan. There seems to be some sort of animosity between 
himself and uh, another woman and they fight in this beautiful fight scene. Uh, again, we don't know much about the story of the game. We'll be finding out more soon. It just was so beautiful and, uh, you know, story-driven RPGs. You know yeah. I'm going to play it. I know. And now going from things that were beautiful to things that were weird. Come on, just Death Stranding. Like, why? Just just stop teasing us. Stop making us solve riddles. No. Looking at the necklace that somebody no. is wearing in the poster and figuring out a music video no. and a song. Just Keep doing that. I love it. <laughs> I want to follow the threads of... Hideo Kojima's crazy mind. <laughs> just like a, I have like a big yarn map yeah. in my cube, and it's just like, mm, fetus, mm, what's up with the baby hands? Mm, what's up with why is he carrying so much stuff all the like, time? Like, what is he even doing? There's a there's, that baby's glowing. There's one point in the trailer when he's wearing it, and you don't realize that the baby is in that weird like chest contraption because it's all like frosted over. Goop, yeah, and he. It looks like a, a crazy invisible monster that walks on its hands uh, is advancing on him. And he just, like, wipes off the frost and, like, wakes the baby up. Come on, baby, help me out <laughs> He's here. like, baby, get up, it's time. Shit's going down. And it, look. Maybe the baby's psychic. I don't know. None of it made any sense. I loved it. I don't know. It, Guys, we're all going to play it. I just, like, we're going to do it because it's weird and new and weird just weird and <laughs> it reminds me of like a black mirror episode yes yeah but like if whoever was writing the black mirror episode was on like drugs that made them extremely paranoid and like scared but also philosophical so like every black time. mirror episode yeah uh so it has a really cool vibe we don't know any more real information except that there's two new ladies and just like Norman Reedus, um, these two um, ladies in the video game are based off of real-life actresses. Yeah. Um, they are a French actress named Leah Seydoux, Seydoux uh, an American actress, uh, Lindsay Wagner. Um, and they just appear as themselves in the game. Not as, like, the actress but themselves, like, but, like, the facial, mo -cap. yeah. Um, sort of feel so. And Hannibal's in it, right? He is. What's we his don't real see him human at all? name. Mads Mikkelsen. There you go. <laughs> um, Mads Mikkelsen is in it, although he did not appear in this trailer. Yeah. It was just Norman and his fetus and these two ladies just wandering <laughs> around. One of them had a weird umbrella, and as I watched it, I was like, that's the most dysfunctional <laughs> umbrella I've ever seen. It is not going to stop rain from hitting you. I just want to know what the hell is going on. Uh, Danelle on, on Facebook says the baby is Jaegering Norman Reedus, which is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I want to see this baby do synchronized <laughs> dance moves with Norman Reedus. I mean, he's already wearing like a Doc Ock backpack. He like. is. And during the trailer, there was like a straight one minute span where they just showed clips of Norman Reedus carrying things. But just, like, increasingly more things until it became ridiculous. And it just felt like, like you know when you go to the grocery store and you're like, I'm going to make it back to my house in one trip. And you, like, load up things. All the, and that's what it was yeah. like. Um, Carrying as many bags on one arm. So I want to, I guess I want to play that simulation game. I guess. Listen, uh, I don't care if the game isn't as good as the hype. I just want to know <laughs> what's happening. I don't care if it's just a Norman Reedus carrying simulator. I need to know. He's carrying a bunch of stuff. He's carrying a baby. He's yeah. carrying, I guess, the burdens of his past life. We got some glimpses of that. Look. Let's listen. Let's leave Sony in our mysteries. And let's talk about everyone. There's more than just Sony. There is more than just Sony. Uh, let's talk about Bethesda. Uh, we're just going to touch really quickly on Fallout 76 since we have already talked about that. But we got a lot more information about what exactly the game was going to be. Mothman. Mothman. What? What is that? The Mothman is a cryptid from West Virginia. And on the map that they showed when they were like, you get to go all over West Virginia. There's a little section that said, Mothman. Want to fight the Mothman. Yeah, I mean, he's a giant mutant. It's like a moth-based view. Yeah, I want to okay. fight the moth. They're going to take it very literally. Okay, so obviously that was the most important part about uh, Fallout 76 that we learned. Just kidding. The most important parts that we learned is it is an open-world RPG with nice. multiplayer elements. Uh, but it's not... Play together. Yeah, it's not like an MMO kind of situation. It's more like a shared world uh, with a very limited server of, like, 
like 12 to 24 people yeah so more like a destiny rather than like a world of warcraft which i'm all all on board for because i am going to start a post-apocalyptic band yeah bianca already called the tuba but tuba. i think i can do piano or we have a band and it's just all tubas I think all that's, tubas. i think that band would sound great uh but, what's um just let us know what you think our post-apocalyptic uh, band tuba name? band yeah, yeah let us know one thoughts and feelings about that two What's our name be? What's our band's name? Uh, so we know that it's a, a yeah. open world RPG with multiplayer elements. Uh, that it takes place in West Virginia, as that you mentioned. It's the earliest um, Fallout game. There was a giant sloth in the trailer. It looks great, mm-hmm. and we all know we're going to play it. Come join our server. We'll all have fun. <laughs> Not to mention there are nuclear armaments on the map. Oh, yeah, you can nuke each other. Right, so because, everybody okay. on the server just is, like, trying to find these nukes so that they can nuke each other's settlements. Um, so I'm just going to spend a lot of days doing that, I yeah. feel like. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't just announce Fallout 76. They could have. They could have. But they, Todd didn't stop he there. Could. Don't stop that train. Don't stop the Todd train. It hasn't reached its station. Choo choo, here comes Howard Central. Uh, They also announced Doom Eternal, which is a sequel to their wildly popular uh, Doom reboot that came out. I think it was just last year, which was really fun. And basically what we know about it is that it exists and that there's twice as many demons and you're twice as powerful. So more blood, more guts, more glory. That's all I needed to know. That's what I'm going to say. Um, there was also a brief trailer for a new Wolfenstein game. Yay! Um, it seems like BJ Blas... Oh, man. Blaskowitz? Blastowitz? Uh, What's his name? I keep making fun of it. Just old BJ. Be old BJ. <laughs> Call um, old BJ. It looks like instead of following our, our original Wolfenstein hero, mm-hmm. BJ Blaskowitz, something like that. Please help me. Why do you keep saying it if you don't know? Because I know if I just keep saying it, at some point it'll come out correctly. I okay. know it, I just can't remember. Okay, so um, it doesn't follow Old Beach. It, it follows, follows his twin daughters, mm-hmm. who look great. One of them seemed to be um, like a close-up melee fighter, and one of them seemed to be a sniper, which, in my opinion, is the perfect combo, because one person gets up, up in that action, and the other person <laughs> saves their butt. Yes. Uh, so what we do know is that you can play it solo or co-op, and I'm hoping that means couch co-op, and that's an instant buy from me. Any duo couch co-op game, instant buy, and I love it. So that seems fun and great. Also punch some more Nazis, obviously. Pew, pew, pew. Um, also, we got a hint of a new game, Starfield. That's it. Get out of here. Garfield in space. It's not. Probably not. But I would play Here's that. the I thing. I would probably play that, though. They didn't specify that it wasn't it, Yeah, they didn't say it wasn't. So, um, basically, all we know is it's a Bethesda game that takes place in space. Please let me kiss an alien. I'm you there. have Mass Effect for that. We don't know what's going to happen. They're not making a new Mass Effect game this year. That's true. So, I can't get my alien kissing fix. <laughs> you need a new one every year? <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, last... No, we're moving on. That was it. That was the only thing that... Did you want to talk about this? Oh, of course I did. The biggest announcement of Bethesda's press conference was that they teased that Elder Scrolls VI is happening. Yay! I'm not kidding, like, the theater erupted. And this was the most important announcement. And Aaron just wanted to, to just go on with the show without even mentioning it, which I find offensive. Well, we just don't, we also don't have a lot of information about it yet. Todd was like, okay, and before I leave, um, we're gonna make a new Elder Scrolls game. Thank you! Bye! (laughs) And that was basically what the press conference was. That is exactly what happened. We know absolutely nothing about it. I'm sure that there, as we speak, a lot of very rabid fans staring at this image of mountains and being like... (laughs) If you look at the, fall, yeah, uh, like, 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 oh, well, if you look at the geography here, you mm-hmm. can tell that this mountain is where the great dragon, no, mm, no, I don't know that. <laughs> we want to find out from Bethesda. We're looking forward to more news from that. But what we do know is that it's farther away. Uh, it's not coming out this year. Don't expect it this year. Temper those expectations and just wait for Todd to gently hand it to you um, in his fully formed package just right there for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's delivered. Todd will deliver it to yeah. your house. Todd Howard will hand deliver. We're making Elder Scrolls promises 6. we can't keep, but 
Todd, if you're watching, which we know you are, mm-hmm. um, could you just please hand deliver every copy of even people who digitally download it? Could you just show up at their house and be like, "How's the download hey. going? Was it good? Is it good? Shake Great. their hand and then leave. Provide some tech support." <laughs> Oh, no, actually, the thing is that you have to do it this way. Okay, we're good? We're good. Thanks, Todd Howard. Yeah. Uh, All right, Microsoft, they had a press conference. They did. They announced Halo Infinite. Yay! So it's a Halo game that never ends. I'm fine with that. (laughs) I'm fine with that. Uh, Basically, we don't have much information. As I said, a lot of these uh, press conferences are just like teaser trailers. But do we need that much information? As soon as they showed Master Chief's helmet, I was just like, done. (laughs) I'm there. I'm with it. And then at the end of the trailer, he plugs in an AI to the back of his suit. And I was like, Cortana's here too. All right. Pack it up. Round it out. That's where we're all going in the future. Let's go kill some Flood. Let's go. We're done. Yeah. Um, We don't know what it is, but we know that... It looks like it was almost post-apocalyptic, like post, nature- post, post-apocalyptic. Yeah, like like Horizon Zero Dawn, where like shit went really bad, and now nature has taken over, and now I don't know we're back again. Uh, we are just full of conjecture here, or at least I am. Um, <laughs> we'll be finding out more hopefully soon. And what I want more Master Chief. That's all I can say. I want more Cortana. That's fine, too. I take that. <laughs> there was also a little... Just talk to your phone or computer. I don't know. You don't have a Windows phone. Does anyone? <laughs> My mom does. <laughs> hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. <laughs> What's up? Um, There's also a new Gears of War game that was, like, starring their Funko Pops, and I thought that was very cute. Yes. We're so. going to leave that at that one sentence and, and just go. let that Move on. live there yeah. now. It's done. Uh, they also announced a ninja game from the creators of Dark Souls uh, from Studios. It will be the hardest ninja game you've ever played. <laughs> so I got really strong Ninja Gaiden um, vibes. It's basically like if Ninja Gaiden had a baby with Bloodborne, that would be this. It's Bloodborne except Japan this time. And I'm here for that. But there were some things you didn't like about the trailer that you saw? Okay, here's the thing. There was a giant centipede, and it was very creepy, and it was, like, wrapped around this creepy, maybe mummified man. It was a little unclear. And then there was also a giant snake. And the thing about it is I hate snakes more than anything. I hate giant centipedes, so. Well, the giant centipede wasn't great, and also I didn't like that it had so many legs, and it also resembles a snake at the same time. Just no, centipedes shouldn't exist, and I will die on that hill. That's the hill that I will die on. For a Slytherin, you really don't like snakes very much. I super don't like snakes at all. Which made um, playing God of War very interesting when the giant snake, like, gets all up in your face. I was like, hey, I don't like that. Big snake. Big snake. I haven't gotten to the world ending snake yet. You will soon. Uh, So, it looks really cool. It's called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Yes. Uh, and it should be coming, I think they said 2019, so... Yeah. Looks pretty cool. I'm excited. Um, I mean, obviously Microsoft announced a lot more, a new Gears of War game, yes. and, um, obviously, like I said, the Funko Pop Gears of War. Sure. Like, they, they had a lot more, but... We're just hitting those highlights. Let me tell you, if Bianca's we hit, hitting her highlights. If we hit every game that they announced... We'd be here all week. We'd be here all week. I could do an entire hour-long show about my thoughts and feelings about Kingdom Hearts 3, but... That's neither here nor there. It looked very good, and Rex was very funny in Toy Story World. (laughs) We're apparently going to have, like, a whole um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag slash Sea of Thieves um, boat-based combat within Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm I'm here for it. I'm there for it. But also, this game is so off the rails. I love it. I love it. It's ridiculous. It's the game of my childhood, but boy... I'm really excited. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, Nintendo. We're going to hit the big Nintendo news, obviously. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Okay. So, my thoughts about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yes. Love it. Love it. Here's the thing. Personally offended by the lack of... Of inclusion. Yeah, Nintendo said that they included everyone. They said, everyone is here. That was their tagline. Every Nintendo character is here. And, like, if we look at this poster, there are a lot of them. There are. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to let Nintendo have that. There are a lot of them. They said it was the biggest crossover 
in history. But here's the thing. You just left out the key player in this game. And we ha- we we here at Think Geek this week decided to help you out, Nintendo. Oh, there it is. There and it this is. is what we want to see. And this is what the people want. Honestly, I think this is the official... I mean, this should just be the official art, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Just right there. Just right Oh, uh, here's there. here's the thing. I did... Uh, I did have the wrong scene there, so we just looked at that for a long time. But I'm not, I don't regret it. I do love Waluigi, and I think that um, Nintendo, by you not including him, you're really letting your your Waluigi fans down. I was trying to think of a clever name for us. No, there's not. <laughs> there's not. Um, I, putting aside my very hurt and distraught feelings that you did not include Waluigi, uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate sounds amazing. It contains every Super Smash Brothers character from yeah. every Super Smash Brothers game. They're all playable. Ice climbers. Yeah, ice climbers are back, and we have two Pokemon new. Trainer. What? We have two new uh, heroes, champions, fighters. I don't know what they call them in Super Smash Brothers. Challengers. Challengers. Uh, we have Riley from Metroid and uh, the Squidling from. That's what I want to play. Too. You already got her on into uh, Mario Kart, and now bring her on into fighting all of her and friends with her fists there. and her guns. Uh, it just, it looks very good. They go into a lot of detail about the changes that they're making. I mean, I'm not even kidding. By, like, character, they're like, and now to Ice Climbers, okay, and now to Mega Man, okay, and now to Link, okay, and now to Young Link, and Toon Link, and... So, Pokemon Trainer. That's my favorite. I really like Pokemon Trainer because you get three characters you can play at once. That's true. I like I like Kirby. Um, I know that he's considered very easy, but I had a lot of fun just, like, sucking people in and taking their powers. And then, Ch- you, what? I have never played with someone who plays Kirby who actually takes their powers. I just play with people who just turn into rocks. They turn into rocks all the just time. Just constantly. That's, like... <laughs> It's like Pikachu constantly using his big thunderbolt. Yes. His down B, I think. Mm-hmm. And then Kirby just falling on top of him. That is so the whole game. The stable of Kirby is the falling on top of people and then beam sword. The, uh, oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. I think it's like, like up B or maybe it's down B. I, can't I think remember it's his anymore. super jump, right? No, his super jump is just him. Yeah. No. yeah. It is. This is like, yeah. Yeah. And he goes yeah. up and down and then the beam sword comes out. And that, that's the staple of Kirby. Rocks. Beam, and then taunt. Hi. Oh, Hi. <laughs> I hate. That's I love Super Smash Brothers, childhood. but I hate it. I hate when people are good. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, but I enjoy it. Uh, anyway, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate looks amazing. It's coming out. I didn't actually write down the date. So, Soon, at some point in the future. At some point, it will exist. And this, I think, is going to be the first game that's taking advantage or using the Nintendo um, online system. Mm. So, like, you've got your Xbox Live or your Xbox Gold. No, it's Live, right? And your PlayStation Network, and Nintendo's got their own sort of, like, pay $5 a month or whatever to play online with your friends. And it will be, of course, on the Switch. Uh, it will see the return of eight-player battles. Nice. Uh, you can use your GameCube controllers, which, I mean, that's How? just a staple. Just like they had for Wii U, they're, they're going to have, like, a peripheral where you can plug them all in. And it'll work I, No, okay, yes. I understand they'll have a peripheral. I am imagining my Switch dock. <laughs> it's, th- it's this big. Yeah. How are you going to plug GameCube controllers into it? Look, the scientists at yeah. Nintendo have worked <laughs> this out. figured it all out. Um... Here's a fun story about Super Smash Brothers. I've been playing Super Smash Brothers since N64, since it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played with my sisters growing up. And while we did really enjoy smashing each other, as the name suggests, yes. we, um, at the time, Amiibos didn't exist. So of you course. couldn't have uh, Nintendo action figures to play games with. Yes. So what we did do was... Legos. No. Barbies. We paused. We made a, a no time limit game. Sure. Timer. Infinite. Yes. And then we did just use the Super Smash Brothers characters as the dolls in the game. Sure. And made our own stories that way. So that's a fun way you can play Super Smash Brothers also. Um, the best 
the best pla- like uh, land level to do it on is um, Hyrule Castle. Obviously, there is a lot of space to move There's around. There's a lot going Really, on. to play with, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> the best way to play Super Smash Brothers is to create your own map. And here's what you do. You create a big box. Perfect. A big box that's yes. the size of the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you take it down just a little bit at the top. So, when you spawn, you're not spawning off screen. And then you cut a little hole in the top of the box. And the way that it works is there's no items, nothing drops. You just go in there. You go into this box that only has one entrance that's very small. And then you just <laughs> beat each other to death. And eventually, if you just look at someone wrong, they're at like 999%. They'll go through the hole. And then it's just like a ping pong game of... <laughs> like geometry you're like calculating angles in your head trying to get them through the hole and it's very fun i highly recommend it we called it box of doom and that's it that is amazing and we have to play (laughs) yeah it's very good it's very good um but is it the best thing that you've experienced this week the thing that you're most excited about this week it is not erin why don't we go over our slurps of the week Yay! Yay! <laughs> I hate us. <laughs> uh, Slurp of the week is the absolute best thing that happened to you this week. Or the thing you're most excited about. Mm-hmm. Something that really improved your week mm-hmm. and made you happy. It has to be a good thing. We here at Think Geek want to celebrate the things that we geek out about, that we're excited about. And um, what is yours this week? Mine is the most recent episode of Westworld. Uh, I'm definitely going to make this spoiler free because I know some people don't always watch it Is this it a spoiler? On time. This is the picture I picked? No. Okay. I don't think it's a spoiler because they pretty much show that in the yeah. trailer for next episode. Basically, we follow a ghost nation warrior um, basically through the timeline of everything that we've been watching so far and even before that. Yeah. And we see it from his perspective. And it just opened up a lot of the world that we hadn't had access to before. And it really added a lot of depth to previous decisions and events that happened. It is by far my favorite episode of the show so far. Even in season one, I was enthralled the whole time. I loved it. And man, it just blew my mind. It was very good. I think it is my favorite episode of Westworld. Like, it answered questions. It didn't really annoy us with mystery timelines <laughs> and we learned like we learned so much and it was just a really good story i really loved it too. and it was all a cohesive timeline like it went from oldest to newest and like not that i don't love 12 different timelines and where are we and when are we by the way we're in space don't worry about it that's um, bianca's theory <laughs> um <laughs> But for the first time, I feel like we had an entire episode that was just like we knew when we were, and it went from oldest to newest, and we didn't have to think about it, and it was like a refreshing drink of lemonade. It was beautiful. And then next week we're going to find out that was a lie. It was all a mistake. Right, it was all a simulation. Someone's dream. Oh my god. Was it all a simulation? It was all all a dream. (sighs) Um, someone on Reddit pointed out that in one of the scenes they think they can see a cameraman. Yes. Yeah. I did see <laughs> and that. they're like, is it an error or an Easter egg? I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you just get a cameraman in the shot. <laughs> Sometimes we'll have to find out in the next episode. You know they're gonna find a way to retcon that in. You know that they will. Yeah. Because they do read the subreddit. So they'll they'll fix it. They'll fix it. All right. That was my slurp of the week, the most recent episode of Westworld. Erin, what was your slurp of the week? Uh, this past weekend, I saw a wonderful movie. Okay, what and was it? And I think it really, as I was thinking today about, like, whoa, what was my ex- most exciting thing? Um, it was Ocean's 8, which <gasps> I did see, and I loved so much. Okay, tell me your favorite. Out of all these beautiful women. Oh, God. Uh, Kate Blanchett, obviously. Yes, number one. She is the best. Yes. Um, I loved this movie. It was amazing. I mean, like, it was just a really fun heist movie. And it which had is a, what you want. Which is what you want. I loved the TV show Leverage because, like, you'd watch it and you'd be like, listen, I know they're going to do a heist. And that's and what's going to happen. Did. And then they follow through and they deliver some fun twists and turns around, along the way. So I'm like a sucker for a good like, like heist movie. And this one was great because it's got so many of my favorite actresses in it. And all of them played like an amazing part. And it was just fun. It was fun to watch. Which I think is the point of a movie. Yeah. Um, I 
like to engage with my media a lot. I always, I, every time I, I watch a lot of like TV and, and movies and stuff, and I just come in and tell Bianca all of my problems with it. And I'm just like, I love this movie so much. Let me tell you everything I hated. Yes. I loved it, but I have and to I'm talk like, about it. And I'm like, Aaron, I didn't see it. I've never watched this movie. And I you didn't, didn't watch The Kissing Booth on I Netflix. I didn't watch The Kissing Booth or Ibiza on Netflix. I didn't, not yet, but now I have to. Now you have to, so you know all of my rants. But, um,. As much as I like doing that, I like engaging with the media that I consume. Um, sometimes it's good to just go see a movie and have fun and just be like, yeah, oh, they did a heist. Yeah. They had a whole heist and it was great and everyone was in it and I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I'm really excited to see it. I've watched all of the trailers now and I think I know what I'm going to watch this weekend. Uh, really? Because I'm going to go see Incredibles too. <laughs> ah, that's fair. Um, yes, Carrie said Kate's character was awesome. Let's see if we can find some of your slurps as well, my friends. Um, we I, had, Ron said we had our bring your kid to work day, and I got to do the intro using engineering to bring ideas in life using my two BB-8 droids. Ron, that's awesome! Like, does that mean that you have two BB-8 droids just sitting around because... We need one. The thing about it is, if you just gave us one, then you would still have one, but then we, we would, would have, have one, have too. one too. Um... We so, would be willing yeah. to pay you in one Harry Potter watch. <laughs> we'll give you a Harry Potter watch. We'll give you a Harry Potter watch in exchange for your very expensive droid. I did see someone that said, uh, Larissa said my slurp of the week was scoring tickets for all four days of New York Comic Con. What? That's awesome. So congrats, Larissa. Have a good time. Take lots of pictures and send them to us. Let us know. Yeah, we don't have a booth there, but... One day. I think a couple people in the office might be going. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Lots of people uh, from Think Geek will be there incognito. Um, but one day, one day we'll make it out. Yeah. Um, Kathleen says her slurp is Voltron Season 6 is out. Woo! As well as, in my opinion, um, Queer Eye <laughs> Season yeah. 2. Very excited for that one. Um, Carrie says half price ribs at Chili's. That's great. Heck yeah. <laughs> Cheyenne says Doom Eternal really brightened my week. I just love Doom a whole lot. Hey. We do, too. E3, I mean, honestly, E3 was my slurp of the week. <laughs> I did fair, watch yeah. every press conference, but it felt like it would be overkill. It was repetitive. If I talked about it for 45 minutes, and then I was like, also, it was the best part of my week. But it was. <laughs> um, so, Faith said, slurp of the week was food tasting for my wedding, which, as of this week, is less than two months. Congrats, Faith. We're Congrats, so excited for your wedding. Um, would you like to hire a very aggressive flute, flute man <laughs> to play you down the aisle because we know a guy and I, f I feel like his schedule is probably booking up very quickly after that star moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you may want to get on that face. Um, Megan says Cyberpunk 2077, I believe, tra <gasps> trailer 3. Yeah, that was... How did I leave yeah, that I know. out? It's okay. Oh my god. It's all right. I know. The it's, biggest... Oh my god. We couldn't handle it all. Watch the Cyberpunk trailer. It looks really good and it interesting. Looks so good. Listen, also, we just, didn't talk division. We didn't talk. Yeah, like we didn't talk we, destiny. Take or yeah, forsaken. Yeah, we we missed some stuff. Just like your little boys over here, little Cade. I love him. This is literally the Cade from my desk, and now he sits under my computer because I have to look at him all the time. I'm so sad. <laughs> um, Nathaniel said, "Incredibles two is amazing. Definitely my slurp." Nathaniel, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna know what you're talking about very soon. I'm gonna watch that movie. Um, and also, I believe Huey said, I was able to get one of the Power Armor Helmet editions of Fallout 76. That's awesome. That is really cool. Now, if you're looking to add some equipment, say, to your wasteland inventory, we have got a no joke, like, over 10 items that came in uh, for... Fallout 76, we have a bunch of pre-order high-end collectibles available from Fallout and other video game universes. And varying price levels from mm -hmm. your, like, expensive build-it-yourself Pip-Boy, which mm -hmm. we're going to look at in a second, to, like, a really detailed um, dog meat statue, as well as two new additions into our Modern Icons line, yep. which are affordable collectible statues. We don't skimp on the quality, just on the price. Hey. hey. Was that anything? I don't Are know. Are you a car salesman? <laughs> One day. That's the dream. That is the dream. Okay. Well, I feel like you don't have to dream it. That You could do it right now. <laughs> hey, kids. Want to buy a car? It's never been driven before. Only Perfect. by an old lady. Went to the grocery store twice a week. And on Sundays for church, of course. Of course. 
All right, let's never do that again, and let's talk about Fallout collectibles. First and foremost, the uh, Fallout 76 Pip-Boy 2000 construction kit. That is a mouthful. Uh, this is a prop replica that is incredibly accurate to its in-game counterpart part of the Pip-Boy 2000 uh, that's featured in the Fallout 76 trailer and later in the game itself. And the really awesome part about the construction kit is that you have to make it yourself. Yeah. And that doesn't... Look, I didn't <laughs> sell it very well, but honestly, it's such a really awesome experience. It's yeah. meant to, like... Remind you of like, you know, the maker movement where everyone is putting their things together, building their own props. It's very similar. And it comes with all of the tools. You need to build your own pit mm -hmm. boy, yeah. So it's uh, about 150 parts. and That's too many parts, some might say. No. But not for you guys, because we believe in you, and we believe in your ability to put it together. Plus, this is the wasteland. You don't just, like, come across high-tech, awesome things that help you. You have to build them yourself. You have to scavenge. And you have to, you know, make do with what you got. And in this case, it's 150 high-end, really well-engineered parts that we've put in a box for you. Because we're not really in the wasteland, because if we were, then you would probably have radiation poisoning. We don't want that. Uh, so that is another highlight of the Pip-Boy construction kit. Absolutely no radiation. We promise 100%. Yes. Probably. Don't um, asterisk. Yeah, asterisk. Maybe a don't listen to anything we ever <laughs> say here on the show. So that's am amazing, and it's available now for pre-order. Uh, it will be shipping before Christmas time, so be sure to get your orders in now yeah. if you need like that really awesome Christmas present, or if you need to treat yourself. Treat yourself. Um, in addition to that, to complete your entire uh, Fallout gear, mm -hmm. if you've already got the power armor helmet, mm -hmm. can we interest you? <laughs> Um, just like a whole bunch of weapons, though. Just a bunch of weapons. We've got a, a plasma rifle, the plasma pistol, the power fist, the super sledge. And as you can see, they're like actual size as they would be in the game. Like... They're just incredibly detailed. I can only put so many pictures here on this mm -hmm. slide here, but check it out on thinkgeek.com. We've got a big uh, E3 pre-order picture on the front page, yep. home page of the site, and there's tons of more additional images to get you up close and personal with these like gorgeous prop replicas. And the plasma pistol and the plasma rifle do light up, so you get that really oh, authentic feel. I thought you were going to say shoot plasma. They don't do that. I feel like that would be dangerous. No, it's fine. I don't think Thinkgeek really ideas. wants to get into, like, arms dealership wanted, in general. I just wanted that, but that's okay. fine. Well, you can't have it. <laughs> thing. Our science hasn't gotten us there. Uh, but if uh, you don't need to increase your uh, inventory with some weapons, don't worry. We have some statues for you. We've got two additions to our Modern Icon line, and they are both Fallout-themed. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have the Fallout T-51 Power Armor statue, and then we have the Fallout Vault Girl statue that's from the uh, Vault Tech DLC, I believe, and they're both really, really awesome. I personally, uh, my favorite is Vault Girl. I love her so much. She's given the thumbs up. She's really accurate to that um, DLC, like, promotional yeah. image. It, it's, like, one for one, a perfect. Um, and these are number seven and eight mm -hmm. in our line, which means that at some point, you'll also get, to, in some point soon in the future, perhaps, mm, you'll also get to see soon, TM. what uh, four, five, and six are. And I think we have um, my my favorite here, Aloy, who's number two, I believe, in the line. Yes. She sits on our desk with our son, Seamus. Hey, um, Sony? Where's yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn Hey, two? Sony? <laughs> oh, man, she's coming after you, Sony. <laughs> Where she's, is she? There she is, I got her. Uh, I, that's all I wanted out of E3, and I was a bit disappointed by that. Uh, so we have those two new additions to the Modern Icons line, but we also have a bunch of other statues. Uh, I'm not just, kidding. We, we have just something for everyone. A ton of stuff. So we have the Fallout One Six Scale Dog Meat. Bam! He's he, perfect. He is wearing 
protective armor, but you can switch out his head so that you can see his beautiful face without his helmet on. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I mean, of course you want to see his beautiful face. Pat him sometimes, but then when he goes into battle, you put that helmet right back on. <laughs> we have the... Liberty Prime statue. Yes. The uh, Atomic Atlas power armor. He's holding up that big I old I really world. like that. I know. I really want to put it on my desk. I want to be... Here, hold on. You have to see my face. I ha I want to be like a power executive sitting. Yeah. Yes, is that bad? No. Like we both have the same. I want to sit in like a high back chair in like an all glass mm -hmm. and have. It's a leather yeah. chair. It's yeah. green. When you enter, I enter. I'm your secretary. I enter. I'm very scared because you're very intimidating. The yeah. back of the chair is to me. You swing around. I swivel around. <laughs> and you know what's on my desk? It is this atomic <laughs> atlas statue because that's what it does for me. That's yeah. what the image. I want to put it on my desk and I want to feel powerful and I want to be like, you know, Bianca. You know what the problem with Atlas was? He always carried the weight of the world. And then I would, like, offer you some advice and some wisdom mm -hmm. from me and my power While still suit. somehow being intimidating. This is a very, mm -hmm. like, Devil Wears mm -hmm. Prada kind of situation. <laughs> yeah, I want to be... <laughs> yeah, except she has a fallout statue. Meryl Streep, but she's got a fallout What statue. I want to do is uh, spray paint it bright gold and mail it to Todd <laughs> Howard and, and at the bottom <laughs> add a little plaque. It's that, his Oscar. <laughs> that just says... Best Todd. Best Todd. You know what? It's you know it's pretty reasonably priced. It's you pretty probably reason. could. And Bethesda, their studio is actually just down the road. You'll from drive us. it to Todd. So I will hand deliver it to you, Todd. Just look out for that. I know you're watching. Thanks, Todd. Todd, we're gonna hand deliver this gold <laughs> Liberty Prime set or no uh, Atomic Atlas statue to you, as long as you promise to hand deliver Elder Scrolls Six to us. To us and everyone else. That's an equal trade, I think. Um, but we didn't just. Uh, get some uh, Fallout stuff for pre-order. We also mm -hmm. have some other video game pre-orders. We all launched them together for like our big E3 collection here. Exactly. Um, and so I got some pictures here. We have the uh, Destiny's Titan Sentinel Sentinel Shield replica. So the picture doesn't do it justice, obviously. But... Right. Uh, but basically, you know, when you go into your uh, Sentinel Super Mode and you get a shield and you get to throw it around everywhere, it's a one-for-one -one replica of that. And yes, you can put it on your arm and wear it. All I'm saying, Cade, if you had just been a Sentinel, <laughs> if you just classed correctly, none of this would have happened and we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have to cry every night clutching my beautiful Cade 6 statue and just crying. She does. It gets very obnoxious. I just am so sad about it. Um, anyway, we also have this beautiful Destiny's collector chess set, which is gorgeous, as well as uh, a Legend of Zelda rupee chest. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm going to be the most powerful executive with all of this on my desk. Yes. Um, uh, they are paperweights. And you may say, is it the whole box that's a paperweight or is it the rupees that's a paperweight? And I say both. You can have both. Why not both? Why not both? Both? Both is both. good. And as well as you could see there in that picture, we do have a 1-1 one, one, uh, scale replica of a PUBG frying pan. And you may be saying, is that just an iron skillet? And I would say, do you know it's That's, made out of foam? It's dangerous to he hit people with skillets. <laughs> we are not just going to sell you a skillet. We're going to sell you a foam skillet because I don't know if you've ever been to a convention. But, like... Don't carry that around. You would be so tired by the end of day one. You would be exhausted. Now, I mean, it's very good, like, weight training. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but a convention is not the place for that. So we've, we've made for you this beautiful foam version that I'm not going to tell you that you could hit somebody with it. In fact, I'm going to tell you don't hit people with it. Just Did like, you wink? Don't hit people with Did it. Did you wink? Don't hit people okay, with it. Okay. Don't hit people with it. Wink. Got right. It. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say wink? No, why would I do that? I don't know. Uh, that was my facial twitch that I have. Right, yes. When I lie, I go... <laughs> But we didn't just launch stuff that you can get in the future. We have some stuff that you can get right now or in what's our processing time? Two to three days. <laughs> yeah, two to three <laughs> One to two business day. days, yes. yes. Um, obviously, we showed you the Aloy statue. You can get that right now. I believe we also have a beautiful Aloy plushie. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we've got some She's looking down on Harry us. Potter watches as well as a Death Eater watch. 
Um, but we, you might have noticed right here. What's going on over here? Speaking of pre-orders, what used to be a pre-order, a Breath of the Wild bow and arrow, is now available for you. Right, now, it's in our warehouse. Our robotic warehouse monkeys want to send it to you. And Bianca did maybe drop this one off the shelf earlier. We're not going to touch it. Look. But I do have probably a picture somewhere. It's I feel very like nice. I did. It is a physical object that we could touch here right now if we chose to but we just don't want to yeah is the thing because i did knock it down earlier and it doesn't belong to us it does belong to our co-worker who displays it in his office i don't think nick's watching and the thing about it is i don't want to ruin this thing that he has i think he bought it with his own money so like let's just not do that we didn't drop it nick it was a joke it was for a, the fans it was definitely a joke um but yeah so a great uh, piece for you to hang on your wall, mm -hmm. remind you of all the good times you had. The uh, ancient arrow does light up. It's kind of hard to tell. I really don't want to touch this, but this is like a, a clear plastic. It and looks then, blue, but it is clear. The and blue, then, yeah. yes, and then um, a light shines through it and it looks like it's illuminated. I will say it is not a functional bow. And to everyone that said, why isn't it a functional bow? Well, one, it would be much more expensive. Two, can you see what this arrow looks like? This arrow is not going this anywhere. This is a video game. This is a fantasy video game. This arrow is the least balanced projectile that has ever existed. You would try and shoot it, and it would immediately just fall off your bow and go straight down into your foot. Yeah, and that's, that's not dangerous. how that works. Um, so it is not functional, but it's a really great cosplay piece it's a really great display yeah. piece it's really high quality like this has like the faux leather and it's actually wrapped like this this shit is legit that's too bad words she said this stream um what? Did, did I say yeah it's fine like, oh no um and no. i know a lot of you have been noticing this beautiful hoodie behind me Ooh. Uh, this is a Space Invaders hoodie. I really like I'm a this. Huge fan. I really like. I can't tell because you're like cowering into Goodbye. the wall. Oh, I have a picture of it. That might be easier. Yeah, I think you should put that on. I just thought you liked touching it. <laughs> I mean, I do. Uh, it's very soft. It's uh, kind of like a lightweight hoodie, which yeah. I like, especially for summer. So you know, when it gets cold at night. But it's got all of the little Space Invader aliens on the uh, sleeves and on the hood. It's what I like to call a summer hoodie, where it's like lightweight enough that you can take it to the beach and toss it on when the sun goes down. But it's also just like, it's cute. I really think it's cute. It is. I want to steal it. I know we talk a lot about stealing all this stuff, but. <laughs> and then we have the Harry Potter watches. Aaron, if you could bring them back up. I will also remind you that. that the giveaway is closed. The giveaway is closed and we are about to announce winners. the winners. But this is what it looks like. If we email you because you are the winner, please tell us what house you would like. Yeah, we I'll have... remind you when I email you. Exactly. But... <laughs> but it also requires you to actually respond to the email, which I feel like, no joke, 50% of you do not do. Sometimes they just take a while. It's fine. It's fine. I want to give you these prizes. We want to give you these free things, but you do have to answer. All right, Aaron. Okay. Choose some, uh, choose some winners while I talk to everybody about my feelings about Kingdom Hearts 3. So here's the thing. I really need somebody to go ahead and write me up a primer for what happened during Birth by Sleep because I didn't own a PSP at the time and I still don't. And I really need to play that game because Aqua, uh, who was a character who was introduced in Birth by Sleep, comes back. And now apparently she's evil when she was good before. And I need to know her whole story and everything that happened so that I can understand where Kingdom Hearts 3 is going. Because if you know anything about Kingdom Hearts 3, it's that the uh, storyline is complicated. <laughs> and that everyone has like 12 different versions of themselves. There's like 13 Xenohorts, Xenonort. Norts. Zena They're just Norts. called Norts. I'm not kidding. That is what the internet calls them. There's like 13 of them now. How many more of them could there possibly be? My guess is we're going to find out in Kingdom Hearts 3. Here's the thing. I played 1 and 2. I didn't play any of the ones that came out in I, between. I played Chain of Memories. And I honestly could not tell you anything about that plot. There is blue ice cream. 
Yeah, there is saltwater taffy ice cream. So I played one and two. I played Chain of Memories. I really need to play Dream Drop Distance, but apparently the one that adds the most to the main storyline is Birth by Sleep, which is only available on PSP. And it just like no, listen, why do that to me? Rachel says you might be able to find a video of it on Twitch or a Let's Play on YouTube. That's true. But I it really, might be long. I really should watch the Let's Play, but I really want to play it for myself. That's we'll fair. All right, kids. I have right. some winners. All right. I'm going to announce the first one, uh, whose name is, oh boy. Jin Simona? I said it. Yep. You didn't. Jin Simona <laughs> D. D. And D. we asked you guys, what was your favorite part of E3? Uh, Jin said uh, their favorite part of E3 was, I love learning about new things. Me too. Me too. And our second winner is? Nicole M. Yay! Yay! Nicole, what was your favorite part of E3? Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Heck yeah! How apt. So, I'm sure that she was listening yeah. and she had a lot of thoughts and feelings. Someone please write me a primer about what happens. I know that they're, all of the major news outlets like Polygon and Kotaku are all going to come out with guides, and I'm just waiting for that because <laughs> I really need it. Is the thing. Okay, so like, Sora... What's the Keyblade War? What is it? <laughs> And then there was Axel, but he's a good guy, and... It's unclear. The guy, the girl with the pink hair. Kyrie. And then there was the boy, and they were all friends on an Roxas. island. Nope, but Sora. No, Roxy, Roxas. Well, he wasn't on an island. He was on the island with the other two. But they weren't on an island. And they all drank, ate the salt ice cream together, but then he's really Sora? Yeah. Help. He's, he's Help. Sora's <laughs> nobody. And he and his friends and... God, what's Kyrie's nobody? What's her name? Mm. I played these games so long ago. It starts it's, with an N, but I don't It's been remember. so long. Are any of them dating? Sora and Kyrie are OP, OTP <laughs> for real. Real? Wait, but. No. If you say Riku's name, I will kill you. I will kill you live on this stream. <laughs> just thought they were dating. No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, anyway, this has devolved into Bianca's uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 OTPs and explaining Kingdom okay. Hearts Okay, well, here's theory. the thing. Steven says you can play Birth by Sleep on the PS4 version of the game. So, solution for Bianca, I need to go read up on my plots of Kingdom Hearts, obviously. So, um... Namine, thank you, Arden. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so thank you for tuning in. I know we ran a little long this time, um, but we talked a lot about E3. There's tons of Fallout stuff for you to pre-order on the site, as well as just like a bunch of new stuff that we release, new products every day. So um, check back and more importantly, uh, come back to visit us next week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Congrats to all the winners. Congrats. And we'll have more free stuff later. Bye.